Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, family. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the Mental House with me, your illustrious host, your minister of soul, Khadija. And I would like to uh, give a shout out to each and every one of, of the birthday week people. Okay, let me make sure I get that under my wraps first. I want to make sure I give y'all a shout out. All you Aries, continue making it happen and continue um, being the best that you can be. And that's for everybody. But anyway, um, oh, also, let me, I'm doing a little housekeeping right now. Let me give a shout out to my man, Tommy. Hope you're feeling good today. Also to my brother Jake, hope you okay, doing well. Uh, and uh, anybody that I missed that might have sent me an email or something, let me um, uh, uh, share this story with you. Uh, I got a, another. I got a story that really triggered uh, something in me. I got it from another content creator. Uh, a quiet storm, and I um, really, really began to evaluate and examine just how much trauma lies in our bodies, just how much trauma really affects us, and in fact, is the guiding light to some of the things that we do, knowingly or unknowingly. And so when you do the work, and try to get quiet and get peaceful, you will find out that your body has blocked out a lot of trauma. You may find that, and if it has, and it comes up to the surface, and you know what it is because you feel those little butterflies in your belly, but it's your responsibility to go through that feeling and, and to get rid of those sour Puss thoughts. I mean, whether you burn them, um, whether you do something, um, you know, to that 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 resembles a a death of and a purging of these traumas up out of your body. To me, I I was triggered this morning, un, unbelievably so, and it was so innocently. And that's why I want you to know how it can creep up on you. It was something that I buried for years until, again, um, a content creator sent me a story about a four-year-old child who had been returned to his biological parents after being in a receiving home or foster home, uh, I think, since he was an infant almost. Well, they were adjudicated to give the kid, they had to give the kid back. And it's, a lot of times the way they do this stuff in social services is so disrespectful. They treat you so nice when they want you to put the child in your home. But once they use you and once they get you set up, and then they do. They go through the process. I, it seems like of disrespecting you, especially when another parent is involved. Well, they'll just not make you a part of the team when they decide to minimize your role. They can go from all this without any kind of knowledge or notice to you into the last minute. Oh, well, we're gonna uh, let him stay. Uh, take him back with his parent now instead of you. Uh, seeing them, uh, having them four days a week or seven days a week. Now you're only going to have them one day a week. And you're like, what? What? What is this? It's, what? That's how disrespectful sometimes the system can be to these parents that want to be foster parents who actually have a vested interest in this kid's life. Okay? Because they want to do the right thing. At least the majority of them. So when I read this story about the little boy going back to his biological parent, what it triggered in me was that when I was about three or four years old, 
I had a foster sister by the name of uh, Cetrin. And um, this was like the early 60s. And I remember at least experiencing one birthday. Because we were the same age. And um, what I remember was she had three other siblings. And they were in foster care as well. Because I remember one of the other foster mothers bringing one of her brothers over. Said trans brothers. And this is so, such a blur. But because my my uh, memory was triggered today, I had a chance to purge this trauma and actually cry for that little girl for the first time, I think, in uh, over 60 years. Um, I remember her parents, her parent, wanting her back. It was her mother. And I guess she had did all the necessary steps that she needed to do. Now, remember, they removed the kids from the home because of abuse. But, you know, as children, time, maybe it was just a year, but time seems like a long time, you know, the smaller you are. So I really couldn't tell you in how many months that it was. I can tell you that Satrin was allowed to go back with her mother. And so was the rest of her siblings. So because all together, it was four of them. And we cried as a family. We cried because we all love Satrin and we didn't want her to go. The next time I saw that trend, there was four squares on the front page of the newspaper where her mother had took all those children and smothered them. Each and every one of them. All four of them she killed. And um, of course, my mom picks, gets the newspaper and picks it up and then starts, you know, screaming. My mother was always screaming about some trauma, it seemed. So I could imagine how much trauma would trigger her trauma all the time. You know, and this was a little girl that probably less than a year ago she had cared for. And the little girl was thriving. And then all of a sudden, now the little girl was dead. So, of course, it sent a trauma shockwave through my whole house. And um, it wasn't until I was given that story today that I had the chance to grieve for said trim properly. Um, that was a very sad thing. And so... It, it, it puts me in line of the guy that jumped off that bridge. This ain't no new thing for people to be suffering trauma. And doing just all kinds of nefarious stuff because of it. So I want to say again, if anybody is needing some help with parenting, you know, don't be ashamed to reach out and ask for some help. If you feel like your kids are getting on your nerves, um, just do the one eight hundred help. You know, mental help. You know, do do that. Do something to get some resources for yourself because we're in a very traumatic time, and then that means it escalates. Although it's nothing new, it can escalate, and the Last thing we need is more traumatized people. We need to pull out all these files, these files that do us no good, like I just did today, um, that just sit dormant in our bodies. We need to bring them up to the forefront and purge them and get them out so you can be free and you can travel a little more lighter. Okay? So I want to say rest in peace and rest in power to set trend. Um, and I want to acknowledge your life this morning. 
All right, you guys. Leave a comment below if you know anybody that just um or you know you know anybody that's on the air verge or if you're on the verge, leave your comment below. Maybe that can be some resources. Um, put in a description box for you. All right. If you like what you hear, subscribe and share.